So basically, Trump came to Florida before the election for the same reason we came here, right? To spread hate and divisiveness. No, no, I'm joking. No way. I mean, because of all the important issues it represents. And with the midterms just five days away, you can feel something in the air. You can feel it, right? Yeah, it's either democracy or humidity. Either way, it is causing my thighs to chafe. And if you are planning to go out and vote on Tuesday, which I hope you all are, Get ready for a rough ride, because whoever is in charge of your voting system is clearly trying to f with you. As if having 12 amendments on the ballot wasn't confusing enough, voters will also have to deal with a trend called bundling, which is essentially grouping two or more different issues under one amendment. And bundling confused everybody, because some of the subjects aren't even related. Like a ban on offshore drilling with a ban on indoor vaping. Okay, now, Florida, why would you do that? Why would you combine two unrelated issues under one vote, huh? Because now, because now, when Floridians go uh, to vote on Tuesday, you realize when you vote on Amendment 9, if you vote no to offshore drilling, you've also automatically voted no to indoor vaping. That makes absolutely no sense. None at all. It's like when they have those weird DVD combos in the bargain bin at Walmart, you know? <laughs> and it'll be like Air Bud combined with Fifty Shades of Grey. It's like, what? Those movies make no sense together. So what, now I'm gonna go home and jack off and then watch Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> that makes no sense. And, and here's the thing. Florida can't afford to be stressing its voters out with mere weird multiple choice exams on the ballot, right? Because you guys have some major decisions to make. There's a big governor race, there's a big senate race, and maybe even bigger than both is amendment number four. Voters will soon decide whether felons should automatically have their voting rights restored in Florida. It is Amendment 4. It's on the November ballot. Now that is huge, because if this amendment passes, over 1.4 million ex-felons who have served their time will regain their right to vote. That is huge. And you know, I'll be honest, what's really great to see is that this is an issue that has bipartisan support. Democrats like that it's criminal justice reform. Republicans like it because it would let a lot of former Trump officials vote again. <laughs> and, and the truth is the system needs to be changed because the way it works now is absolutely crazy, right? If you're an ex-felon in Florida who wants to vote, you have to wait seven years after your sentence is done and then you have to apply to have your rights restored. And then you have to wait another 10 years because of the backlog. And then after all of that, the governor gets to decide if you get to vote again. And with Florida's current governor, the computer says no. I deny restoration of civil rights. I deny restoration of civil rights. But at this point, I'm going to deny restoration of civil rights. There's absolutely no standards. So we can make any decisions we want. I deny restoration of civil rights. I deny restoration of civil rights. So it's all denied. Damn. This guy's denied so many people their rights so fast. Like, you can tell how often he says it and how often he doesn't care about it that he doesn't even pronounce all of the words anymore. Like, it's just a bunch of sounds to him. He's like, I deny the restoration of civil rights. I deny the restoration of civil rights. I deny the restoration of civil rights. You know what he sounds like? He sounds like those roller coaster operators who just phone in the safety speech. And he's like, ladies and gentlemen, arms and legs inside the car at all times, please, I'm gonna enjoy the ride. He's like, what did he, did he say something about saying, ah! And now, look, I'll be honest with you. I think if a person has served their time, they serve their time. They should immediately have the right to vote. They've served their time. You shouldn't keep getting punished after you've been punished. Imagine you wrote on the wall in crayon when you were three years old, and then when you were 30, your mom is still showing up to your office randomly to whip your ass. You're just like standing there in the office like, so if we look at the revenue streams over here, what, what you're gonna see in the third, first one, it's like, mommy, wait, no! No, mommy! No, mommy, please! Mommy, please! No, mommy! There's gonna be four, no, mommy, wait, please! No! <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And, and by the way, please, I know there's some of these arguments where people are gonna be like, oh, you know, the reason you need to strip people of their vote is to deter them from committing crimes. That's just some bullshit, all right? Let's be honest. All right, this is not a deterrent in any way. If someone's gonna commit a crime, taking their vote away is not gonna stop them. It's not like anyone's ever been about to rob a liquor store and then there's a little voice in their head that's like, don't do it, man. Think about the midterms. 